In the previous screencast, we used the curl command line tool to directly exercise the HTTP RESTful API for the movie database. In this screencast, we'll see another way to do it by using a volunteer provided Ruby gem that wraps the API in a way that's more idiomatic to use in a Ruby program. Here we are at the home page for the movie database, and if I click on API and I scroll down in the documentation, one of the sections is wrappers and libraries. There's a list of programming languages for which various volunteers have written wrapper libraries that make it easier to use the RESTful API. You can see there's two different choices for Ruby. We're going to use this Ruby gem contributed via volunteer. Clicking on the link takes us to its home page on GitHub. As is pretty common for Ruby gems, the gem itself is hosted on rubygems.org so that when you type gem install, you should be able to install it with no additional command line arguments. But the gem source code is available publicly on GitHub so that others can contribute. We're going to experiment with this gem directly from the IRB Ruby command line interpreter, but remember that if you wanted to use it in a Rails application, you would have to add it to the gem file as the text in the book reminds us. Recall that in the RESTful API, we had to first sign up for an API key to include with every request, and then we would make requests and get back resources, like movies, in return. Similarly, the gem is structured along the same lines. If we scroll down through the documentation, we can see that there's a call to set the API key, and if we scroll down a little bit further, a list of the different resources encapsulated by the gem. For example, the movie resource allows us to dereference all of these different attributes of a movie, which map directly to the attributes we saw in the JSON object when we experimented with the API using curl. What about the search method that we used to make our initial query? If we scroll down a little bit farther, we can see that the search method is in fact supported, but the way that we call it is a little bit different from how we use the raw API. Apparently, we have to create a new search object, then we have to indicate what type of resource we want to search for, we indicate the query string, and finally, we make the request. So just as we did when we exercised the raw API, we're first going to use the search API call to get results from a particular query phrase, and we'll then use the movie API call to get the details for a particular movie resulting from that search. The first thing to do is make sure that we have the gem properly installed. Of course, we only have to do this once, and in a Rails application, we would make sure the gem was added to the gem file. Once the gem is installed, we can fire up the Ruby interpreter and load the gem. We can follow the instructions in the API documentation and set my API key. Make sure you use your own API key if you're going to try to follow this example. Then, as indicated in the documentation, we can create a new search object, set the type of resource we want to search for, set the query terms that we want to search for, and issue a fetch request, which will actually call the real API. From the syntax, it looks like the result is an array, each of whose elements is a hash. And besides verifying that its class is array, more importantly, we can verify that it responds to each, so it's an enumerable collection. You can also verify that each element of this collection quacks like a hash. So just as we did in the curl example, we're going to look at the ID attribute of the first result returned, and we're going to call the movie detail method to get details about that movie. As the gems documentation suggests, what we get back is a movie resource where we can dereference attributes directly, like title and release date. In a service-oriented architecture, how do we detect and handle errors that arise at the remote server? We'll deal with two cases in this example. In the first case, suppose we have a valid API key, but we try to request details for a movie or other resource with a non-existent ID. You can see that the result looks like a movie object, but its ID is nil. As we'll see in a moment, that's a tip-off that the call did not work as expected. But the other error case we can look at is what happens if we have an invalid API key and try to do a similar operation. In fact, if we try to look up details for an existing movie with an invalid API key, we seem to get the same result, a movie object whose ID field is nil. How can we tell these two errors apart so that we can reliably use this gem in our application? Since the gem's documentation doesn't suggest that the gem raises exceptions when these problems occur, I actually dug into the gem's source code. This gem uses another gem, HTT Party, to handle the underlying communication to the server. When you use that library, there's an underlying property, the API response, that encodes the actual response from the remote server. If we try to look up a valid movie resource, but we have an invalid API key, we get HTTP error 401, which means not authorized. When we look up an invalid ID, but we have a valid API key, 
we get HTTP error code 404, which means not found. By digging into the source code, we were able to determine that these two errors can in fact be distinguished, and we'll use that information later when we write tests to integrate the use of this gem into our application.